You're listening to the Popcorn Conspiracy on centralcoastradio.com. And now we're going to take a look at one of the really big horror films that is out at the moment. Yes, the little franchise that started off with uh, filmmaker Kevin Williamson wanting to poke a little bit of fun at the slasher genre is now up to Scream 6. Now, this time around, it is directed by Matt Bellatini Open, who directed uh, Ready or Not, and Tyler Gillett, of course, who also directed Ready or Not with him. And this time they shake things up a little bit because they move all of the action from Woodsboro to New York. And uh, that move is made because uh, Tara Carpenter, played by Jenna Ontego, is now attending a college in New York. And she's there with her friends Mindy Meeks Martin, played by Jasmine Savoy Brown, and Chad Meeks Martin, played by Mason Gooding. But also having moved to the big city is her sister Sam, played by Melissa Barrero. Now, the latter has only moved there, though, because uh, she wants to follow Tara and keep an eye on her after what happened in Woodsboro. And of course, Tara doesn't really like that. She feels that Sam won't let her live her life. But in fairness to Sam, after what happened in the last film, um, you can't really blame her. And soon... Ghostface follows them to New York and they discover this after a person is murdered in an alleyway and Detective Bailey, played by Dermot Maroney, soon discovers that there's a direct link between this fresh murder and the Ghostface murders of Woodsboro. Now, Kyle, what did you think of Scream 6? I'm struggling with this one and I love the Scream franchise, (laughs) but what did you think of Scream 6? Yeah, it's a thing. I, I love the Scream franchise as well, even though like a lot of the previous installments kind of had their ups and downs. I, I always appreciated the first four movies because I thought that they they pretty much were a self-contained parody of everything that they were. Like Scream, parody of horror of slashes, Scream 2, parody of sequels, Scream 3, trilogies, and Scream 4. It was it came a few years later. It was a, a parody of remakes and reboots and all that stuff. After that, I don't think that there's really anything else that the films can touch on that doesn't feel like just a retread of the basic ideas. And I I felt that about the previous film, uh, which I know was just titled Scream, but uh, it's un, uh, the unofficial title, Scream 5, since this is now Scream 6. Um, yeah, I thought that... that they the franchise it's gone on for so long now that the the whole self-aware aspect of it has become at least for me like really grating um i think that it like the characters and the story of them exist in no reality whatsoever they all know that they're in a movie they all know that there's oh this is a franchise and oh, like a lot of the stuff that existed in the previous movies, but for some reason, I think it just worked a little bit better. Um, I think maybe an issue with that might also be that this movie was uh, streamlined into production because of how well the previous one did, uh, which came out uh, last year. And so it's like very next year, we've got another Scream movie, and I believe they've already announced uh, that they're doing a Scream 7. So because this one is no doubt going to be uh, really successful as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's basically like the, the 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 whole gimmick jumped the shark like three or four movies back already. So I, I guess it, it, it's in some ways it, it's a pity that it, it it's a franchise that at one point I think really defined the slasher genre. But now it's kind of just a, a, a movie where, OK, every other year there's there's another mindless installment there's just there's another scream and another one and another one and it's kind of going in the way of yeah the saw movies or something like that which was just seen as kind of just hollywood pumping out the movies uh this one in particular i again because i i enjoyed the pre the original movie so much uh there's not a lot of i mean there's not a lot of characters left from the original movies to to come back um Courtney Cox makes an appearance, but very not not a very large appearance in the movie, um, considering like a, a placement in the, in the marketing. And I really did miss Nev Campbell, in it. I just yeah, I, I feel like she's kind of a mainstay of the series, and I, I wish that uh, whatever behind the scenes dramas could have been could have been worked out better there. 
Uh, but otherwise, like the the actual mystery and story who who Ghostface is, I don't think that maybe again because of the uh, the the streamlined nature of the film that they weren't able to really work it better into the script. I think a lot of I think it really did. Um, it it really did kind of shine in the mud as to what who like what was going to be the big reveal at the end. Uh, so I think it, it's 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 kind of one of those movies. It's just it's a fun slasher. It's it's a fun night out kind of movie, and I appreciate the fact that it's a it's it's a really gory movie in an era where not very many slashes are. Like, usually, the slashes that they make are now quite tame and made for pretty much made made for uh made for uh younger audiences even which which i appreciate that that's something that the screen franchise has always kept that in that way it kind of stands apart from from its contemporaries in a way um but yeah so it, it's a fun it's definitely it's a fun like mindless slasher movie but yeah it's 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 i don't i don't think it's it's uh it's the best in the franchise yeah, I I found this to be a really up and down film because I really enjoyed the the move to New York in the opening. I thought it had a really creative um, opening sequence. Um, I won't go too much into that because I know that's a spoiler because uh, Scream fans love that first kill. There's always something <laughs> yeah. special about it. But I also love that it um, was able to open up things like um, uh, Sam and Tara having like a sister squabble about um, Sam following Tara to New York and the whole college experience. I also liked some of the sequences in here. I thought the sequence of, uh, of Sam and Tara being um, uh, chased by a, a, a ghost face in a convenience store worked really well. I thought that scene worked. Mm. I love the, um, the sequence as well, where they're on the subway um, and all because it's Halloween, there's all these different people dressed up as different um, horror uh, villains <laughs> from over <laughs> the years. And there's also like a ton of ghost faces on there. So they don't know if the killer is on the train with them or not. There was little things about this film that I didn't really like. Um, one of the things that really annoyed me about this film was there's a one character in particular, and I, I won't even give agenda because I don't want this to be a spoiler, but they get stabbed really, really horrifically in the stomach and get taken to hospital. And then later in the film, they're moving around like nothing yeah. has happened yet. It's only a few hours after that's happened. Um, they also did something really, really weird in this film um, with one of the characters as well. And it really, really annoyed me. And that was um, uh, Hayden Panettea's character of Kirby Reed they've got a coming back in this one as an FBI agent, but I don't know whether it's the way that they've directed her to play the part or not, but it feels like she's an adult film star playing the role. Like it's just not a believable FBI agent with the way that they've got her playing that part. And it's really disappointing because if you've seen Nashville, you know that Hayden Panettiere can act. So you wouldn't think that it was her issue. It's more what she's been directed um to do but the other bit that also really annoyed me and, and this was the same in jeepers creepers there was a segment in this film where it felt like everybody forgot how to act um and like suddenly the acting became really b grade um and like it was I, again i can't say who it was because it's a, it's a major spoiler but it felt like once the, the film had started to reveal some of its big secrets. A couple of actors kind of dropped off and that gave them the, the green light to become an over-actor. It was just... Really hammy it up. Yeah, it and up. it was really weird yeah. because they didn't do that for the rest of the film. It was just really, really strange that um, that, that seemed to happen. But the other thing I did really like was, and I was kind of worried about this, because a couple of horror franchises that I've liked recently that have been ones that have been around for years have gone, oh, let's jump onto the supernatural kind of thing. Like if you saw the last Halloween film, uh, suddenly Michael Myers' powers could get passed on to somebody else, like in a supernatural yeah. kind of thing. And I was really hoping that they didn't do that with Ghostface in this film, that, oh no, Ghostface is supernatural. I'm really <laughs> glad that they didn't do that, that they've that they've kept it, that uh, no, Ghostface is human. 
Um, so yeah, I did like elements of this film, but there was bits that I didn't like as well. Lee, what did you think? Because I know you're a big Scream fan of the originals as, as well. Yeah, I do love the originals. Not to say that I didn't like this movie. I did like the movie and um, you've already stolen some of my outstanding scenes. <laughs> um, the convenience store and the train um, were certainly two that really stood out as, um, yeah, I liked the way that they they did that, how it played out. Um, and I do like um, the actress Lisa Ber- Melissa Barrera. Barrera, yep. Um, who plays Sam in this. Um, in fact, I think she was probably the more the outstanding performance in this out of all the actors. Um, and, I, you know, the, the sisterly storyline, it's a good one. Um, but it's just not the same without Sydney, I have to say. Yeah, it. yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, without Nev Campbell. Um, while Courtney Cox is in it, um, it just it doesn't have the right feel that it's, you know, yeah. it's not the same as the original. Nev really is the one um, that is the face of Scream, I think. Yeah. And without her, it's not really Scream. So if you think of it as not a Scream movie, but a slasher movie, a horror movie, um, it's enjoyable. I like it. But, to, yeah, but because I love the original so much, um, without Nev, it's just it just doesn't feel quite right. Yeah, and of course, this time you notice that probably more as well because there's no Dewey this time around because he got sliced and diced in the last film. So um, yeah. yeah, so with no David Arquette and no Nev Campbell, it's probably even more noticeable. Whereas I think you probably might not have noticed Sydney's disappearance as much if um, if Gail and Dewey had been together, kind of thing in New York, but. Uh, yeah, I actually thought that part worked quite well because one of the things I was a little bit worried about was when they were talking about setting it in New York, I was like, well, that's fine. Bringing the teenagers there are pretty easy because they're just going to college, but how do you get Gail to New York? But they actually did that quite well, that she's like doing another series and now she lives in New York with um, her boyfriend. Uh, yeah, don't get too attached to him, people. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Um, living in New York, I thought that part actually worked because sometimes that can go horribly wrong in these kinds of films where they shift the thing and it's like, oh, so I think they did that in um, uh, one of the shows that did it quite badly was Dawson's Creek when it moved to Boston and it was yeah. like, um, hey, I'm going to college in Boston. So am I. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> it's like, what, well, of all the places and then it was like, oh, but um, but Pacey's not going to um, college. How do we get Pacey to Boston? Mm-hmm. Oh, he just happens to um, to get a, a work on a yacht that just happens to turn up in Boston. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it was like really forced, whereas uh, this one did that quite well. So to finish off our look at Scream here on the Popcorn Conspiracy, what are we all going to give it out of five, starting with you, Kyle? Uh, I'm going to give it three out of five. Like I say it's still it's an entertaining, uh, entertaining slasher film. I, I got it. I, I appreciate the fact that they're still that they still make these things bloody as all hell. Because <laughs> um, yeah, it's nothing nothing sucks more to me than, than like family friendly slasher films. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, three out of five. It's 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 one of the weaker ones, but uh, it's still an entertaining night out. And Lee, what are you giving this one out of five? Yeah, I'm giving it three as well. It is one that I, I would watch. Um, even if they put out another one, I would still be there. I I do enjoy these films. Um, and while Sydney's not in it at the moment, maybe in the future, please pay her that money. Get her back. <laughs> um, if that's the issue, I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, if they make another one, I'll be there because I did enjoy this and I did enjoy the opening scenes and I did enjoy the storyline. Um, it has room for improvement, but also it's enjoyable. So three. Yeah. I'm a little bit harsher than you guys. I'm giving it a two and a half out of five, the, the overacting mm. and the, um, the ability of people to bounce back after a severe stabbing really annoyed me. So <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to give it two and a half out of five. And now we're going to keep the scream celebration going here on central coast radio.com. Because we are going to play Red Right Hand by Nick Cave, the song that I think is featured now in 
every Scream movie. So here is Mr. Cave on the popcorn conspiracy.